The last Jalora moved to the lecture podium, his facial scale shimmering in a rainbow of colours as he looked at the assembled newcomers to his university. As headmaster, it was his responsibility to introduce new students to certain aspects of living and learning here, and it was part of the job he enjoyed the most, looking forward to it each and every year since he began. Settle down, settle down, students. Class is now in session, so optics and directional sensors forward, please. Now then, here at Dorrance University, we pride ourselves on our diverse student body. However, with so many different species represented among the students, certain issues can arise. This mandatory series of classes is here to ensure the major disruptions can be headed off at the pass, to borrow a human idiom. This first class is also the most important. Now if you look around, you'll see you all have something in common. Can anyone tell me what that might be, Mr. Lavroy? The young Assety lowered her hand, her optic tendrils quivering in nervousness as she became unsure her answer was the correct one. None of us are human? Correct, Mr. Leroy. Not only are you all non-human, but none of you came from worlds with a significant human population. This means that it's highly likely you've never encountered humans on a daily basis, and so this class is put together to ensure you understand the chief concern of dealing with them. Does anyone else have an idea of what that is? Yes, Duffel. Mating instincts? There was a widespread giggle at that, and the headmaster himself laughed along. It was always the answer given. Not this time, no, Duffel. Though humans are compatible with 78.3% of galactic species, their tendencies towards interspecies coupling are not the subject of today's class. Anyone else? Lord Ratapoy? You look like you know the answer. The Harry's whiskers twitched in annoyance as they were forced back to reality from their daydreams. Pack bonding instinct? Very good, Lord Rapportoy. Pack bonding instincts. Humans are so far the only species to have pack bonding instincts so severe that they can cause problems. The reason for this is an evolutionary advantage. Humans evolved in areas with hostile weather and wildlife. A strong bond between them assisted in their continued survival. Now that alone would be fine, but humans can pack bond with anything. Pet animals are seen as members of family just as much as blood ties are. Livestock can be seen much the same way. Humans have even been known to carry objects like stuffed animals or particularly nice looking rocks with them for their entire lives, treasuring them and becoming extremely agitated when they're unable to find the object. Their ability to pack bonds so quickly to people and objects was a useful tool during their societal development. It allows for the forming of bonds regardless of ethnic or national lines, as well as allows for a strong empathetic drive to develop. For instance, during one of the humans' wars, a truce was declared during an important holiday. Men and women who didn't speak each other's language and who hated each other naught but hours ago joined hand in hand to celebrate the holiday, play sports and exchange gifts. In another war, a near immediate bonding instinct made a pilot assist an off-course enemy pilot back towards his own size airfields, despite the fact that it may have led to the first pilot's death at the hands of anti-aircraft guns. These pilots landed together and stayed friends through their lives, despite the war ending in the second size defeat. Now these all sound very noble and amazing, and they are, but they serve to assist us in understanding just how powerful the human's instincts can be. This is less of a problem with friends or lovers, of course, but humans can pack bond without interacting much, or even interacting at all with the subject of their bond. Such bonds are usually referred to as crushes, or by the general term, infatuation. As a personal example of this, a young human girl in my class sat next to me during our economics class. We introduced ourselves, and that was that. We never spoke again except to clarify points from the lecture or borrow supplies. One time I was sick for a week, and that human woman, Michelle her name was, tracked down my friends, got my address, and turned up at my apartment with a large basket of food for me as she thought I would be hungry after a week of fighting illness. Now while that interaction had a positive outcome, sometimes these bonding instincts and crushes can develop into behaviour to be wary of. Stalking, both online and in real life, harassment and more can occur if the bond is left unchecked. Oftentimes humans will know these bonds aren't reciprocated, and will attempt to sever them before it goes too far, but others do not have such self-control. In instances like this, it is imperative you alert a professor as soon as you can, we have resources in place to ensure your safety, and to assist the human in severing their bond to you without pain or hardship to either side. The students in the room all look fearful now. The tonal shift was weighing heavily on their minds. Good, the headmaster thought. Hopefully they'll be on the lookout, and there'll be no incidents. I'm all aware this all sounds very doom and gloom, especially after just extolling the virtues that can come with such bonds, but please do not allow such thoughts to cloud your mind too badly. 
Humans pack bonding instincts can be strong. Once befriended, they are loyal almost to a fault. Take the time to approach them carefully, and humans will rarely lie to you or hurt you. They're all just like yourselves. New to a university this large and diverse, and looking to see who they can befriend, or how they can reinvent themselves from their school child personalities. Our human population is over 60% of the combined total of every other species. They form a massive minority group here at Durant, and so classes like this ensure there are less incidents than you may find at other universities. That being said, please remember today's lecture moving forward, both the positive and negative. Be on the lookout for one-way infatuation bonds, but don't be so wary as to not interact with humans at all. Now, I'll spend the remainder of the allotted time answering any questions you have, so long as they're not about humanity's mating instincts, as Durfell put it. There was widespread chuckling as several appendages shot up. The rest of the two hours were spent answering question after question about pack bonding instincts, and how best to approach and interact with humans. As the session ended, and both the headmaster and students filed out, already there was a throng of humans gathered in the corridors, just as there always was. While this was the first class new students took each year, they had been on campus for a month and many had been paired up with humans for dorm rooms or group accommodations. One human's face stood out, however. Middle-aged, with grey streaks in her hair. His wife may have aged nearly 40 years, but she was just as beautiful as the first time he saw her. She was standing with him, just out of her line of sight, talking to a woman about her age, but who was carrying a folder that marked her as having come from the introduction lecture for new human students. He approached her from the back, wrapping his arms around her midsection and kissing her on the cheek. Hey, Michelle. You bring lunch again? 